Kids are reuniting with their friends at school after a rough couple of years of virtual learning, isolation, canceled classes and activities. Uh, this transition plus peer pressure, societal changes, it could have an impact on mental health. That's why parents, a support resource for moms and dads and Very Well Mind, which is one of the largest mental health sites in the world, conducted a survey about mental health days for kids. Mental health days. Out of 1,000 parents of teens and tweens surveyed, 75% agree that mental health days can be an effective tool in managing a child's emotional struggles. 25% cite stigma as a barrier. And Grace Basitas, the editor-in-chief of Parents, is joining me now to discuss these results. Why is it that younger and younger people are in a mental health crisis or need an answer to stress? Well, thanks for having me on, Adrian. Um, you know, as you said, the pandemic, canceled activities, remote learning, all contributed to an escalating mental health crisis for kids. And parents and Very Well Minds surveyed over a thousand parents of teen and tweens to find out how they feel about mental health days. And in that survey, we discovered that one in three parents say that their child has shown signs of emotional distress at least once a week. So. You know, just the same way we would allow our child to take a day off from school if they have a cold, we should encourage them to take care of their emotional well-being if they're struggling. And mental health days are really a way to recharge and reset. We know from our research that 86% of parents who've allowed their children to take that downtime say it makes a big difference. 62% of parents, they feel that children should be able to take more mental health days. Some would argue kids need socialization for more mental health. So does time off really equate to a reset? Uh, for sure. Um, you know, a lot of the parents that we surveyed say that the pandemic, social media, and issues around friendship and identity really contributed to their kids' struggles. And 47% cited school as a significant source of stress. Um, so it, while the signs of a kid struggling emotionally vary from child to, to child, there are common indicators. Uh, is your child having trouble sleeping? Are they getting belly aches that go unexplained? Uh, a lack of interest in activities? These are some of the things to watch for. And when you take that mental health day, it's really an opportunity to create space to ask your child what feels overwhelming, what can we do to help you recharge? It's really a pause in their regular routine. Nearly half of parents, they cited social stigma over mental health. They said they wouldn't tell somebody else that their child needed a mental health day. Why is that such a big deal? Um, it is a big deal. And nearly half of all the parents that we surveyed said that they wouldn't tell their friends or family. Uh, and, and they just fear being stigmatized. So it's really studies like this that raise awareness of the importance of Mental Health Day. And right now, only 12 states allow mental health days to be used as excused absences from school. So as we continue to have these conversations on a bigger scale, it will hopefully become a less challenging to address mental health closer to home. And parents will feel less inclined to um, you know, feel judged by others. But this really all starts by having these honest, open conversations with your child and letting them know that all feelings are valid and that it's okay to take a day off to manage their symptoms. What do you do if you can't afford to get daycare? What do you do if you have to stay home for your child's mental health day, but you need to go to work because without that, you're not going to be able to keep a roof over your head? Well, our survey really showed that one in five parents just can't afford to take a mental health day. They, they can't take a day off work. They can't afford unexpected childcare. So there has to be more done by schools and perhaps there's ways that you can manage this at home before they go to school, after they come back from school, on the weekends to help your child. At least having these conversations is a really big step forward to helping your kid manage those those tough emotions, those tough feelings. I think we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to make sure I get one more question in for you. To parents watching, what are some of the signs that your child needs a mental health day? Um, well, like I said, uh, it varies from child to child. It could be um, maybe they have unexplained stomach aches. Maybe they're resisting going to school. Maybe they're angrier than usual or they cry a lot. 
Uh, so just watching out for the emotional state of your child and then being willing to have these conversations and ask them what's wrong, what's troubling them and keeping those lines of communication open always. And it's any age of child or is there an age that's too young? Uh, it's never too young to talk about your emotional um, yeah. state of mind. And while we did survey tweens and teens for this survey, these conversations can start early, you know, as early as preschool. All right, Grace Bastidas from Parents. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.